Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic, and I'm back with another video as always. Now today we're going to be talking about replacing the Hydro Booster Assembly on a Dodge Diesel engine. Let's check it out. Now for those of you who don't know what a Hydro Booster is, let me go in a little detail about it. Now the way vehicles operate, they've got power brakes these days, of course, so you don't have to really press down on the brake pedal real hard to stop a car. A uh, 90-year-old woman can stop a full-size 3500 with no issue. Well, that's all based off of power brakes. Now gas engines use a different setup. They use vacuum-operated brake booster. It looks like a big metal can, and it uses vacuum from the engine. The vacuum is created because there is a throttle plate. So they can use vacuum under certain situations to actually make that power brake booster work properly and that presses on the rod for the master cylinder. It's a mechanical advantage. Now diesels are different. Diesels do not have throttle plates so they do not create vacuum the same way a gas engine does. Diesels if they need vacuum for such things on the older ones like maybe for the AC doors or maybe even for cruise control, they had to have an external either belt or gear driven vacuum pump. Well, being that on the late models we don't have that, what we use is a completely different system. We use a hydro booster. Now, the hydro booster gets its power from the power steering system. High pressure power steering fluid is pumped up to the hydro booster, so when you apply the brakes, it is actually pushing on the rod for the master cylinder, giving you the mechanical advantage for a diesel. So that's the basic understanding of how a hydro booster works and why diesels use it. Now you will see them from time to time in gas engines, mainly when there is an issue with space. If they don't have the room on the firewall for that large brake booster, they'll go down to the condensed version, which is a hydro booster, and it works just as fine. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and go out to the truck. I'm going to show you why we're replacing this unit, and we'll go ahead and get started on step-by-step -step procedure. So what you have right here is the Hydro Boost Assembly. Right here where the firewall mounts, you've got four studs that protrude through with nuts holding them in place. You've also got a rod that comes off that goes to the brake pedal. On the outside, inside the engine compartment, you've got two high pressure hoses that go here and here, and you've got a low pressure return there. Also on the end, you've got the two mounting studs right here for the master cylinder and the master cylinder push rod. Now if you look up here at the back side of this hydro boost assembly where it enters the firewall into the cab, you'll actually see we've got red fluid right there. That's ATF4, that's what the power steering system uses, and that's what actually flows through the hydro booster. As you can see, it's actually leaking right here and actually coming inside the cab. So that's the whole reason for replacing this hydro booster assembly. Now the first step in this repair is going to be disconnecting both batteries. Remember now, it's a diesel, it has two. And we're gonna go over to the passenger side, we're gonna go over to the driver's side, and we're gonna unbolt both negative cables. Once I've done that, I'm gonna move on to actually removing the driver's side battery. Now the reason why we're gonna be doing that is because we wanna unbolt the master cylinder from the hydro booster assembly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna reposition it and put it in kind of the same position as where the driver's side battery was. So it's gonna give us some room to work. And when we go to move it, don't worry, we're not going to be bending any brake lines or anything like that. In line, there are two steel braided flexible joints. So that's going to give us the ability to actually move that master cylinder and let the lines flex. It's not going to tweak it, it's not going to bend it, it's not going to pinch it. So it's not going to cause any harm. So let's go ahead and move on to disconnecting those cables, like I mentioned, and getting that driver's side battery out. Now we're going to move on to the hold down for the battery. This one's a 10 millimeter with a little plastic wedge. So now we're ready to go ahead and get this battery out of the way. Now here's your brake mass cylinder right here. That's the aluminum body and that's the reservoir. Look right here, that's one of the nuts that we gotta back off. 
and that's one of the studs come out the hydro booster that nets a 14 millimeter we got one on this location and here's the one on the driver's side remember now here's your reservoir bottle there's the master cylinder body and that's that 14 millimeter best method I found to get it off is a ratchet wrench now the way that I found to be the best way to get to those two master cylinder bolts is actually from right here around where that transmission dipstick is I can get in there I can get to that upper one on this side and I can get to the lower one on the back side right there. So get to them from over here and you shouldn't have any problems. Now that we've got those two 14 millimeter nuts off the studs for the mass cylinder, we can go ahead and start grabbing it. And when we grab it to move it, we're gonna kinda go at an angle towards the fender and then come up and to the side. So now we got the master cylinder pulled away from the hydro booster. Now we'll we move on to backing off on the two high pressure lines and getting them out of the way as well. You could do that before the master cylinder or after the master cylinder, whatever works best for you. I've got a little bit more room now that I've got the master cylinder pulled away to get to them. That way I can hold both lines and break it loose. Otherwise, with the master cylinder up there, it's a little bit tighter, but you can get it either way. Whatever you feel comfortable with. If you do it before, you do it after. So we'll move on to that. Now before we do that, we need to put a catch can up under the vehicle because we're gonna be losing power steering fluid. Now the two high pressure hoses, those fittings right there are 18 millimeter. I use one wrench to hold the line stationary so I don't twist it. Get my 18 millimeter wrench, break it loose. Once it's broke loose, you can kind of back it off by hand. And I do the same thing to the bottom one. Now I can go ahead and back them all the way off and let the power steering fluid drain into that catch pan. Now in between the brake mess cylinder and the hydro booster, there's a metal support plate right here that's sandwiched in between. It, it helps support the two metal tubes right here and also helps route the low pressure return. Now what we're going to do is we're going to leave the plate still slid over the studs for the hydro booster. We're not going to worry about that till we get it off. But we do need to work on getting this low pressure hose taken loose. These two lines right here are going to stay on there. We'll take those off once the hydro booster is on the ground. But the low pressure hose right here we're going to disconnect the hose clamp right there and we'll also disconnect where it mounts to that bracket that's sandwiched between the two of them now when we go to take that low pressure hose clamp loose we can use one of two tools we can get us a pair of 90 degree needle nose to get down in there squeeze it work it off or you can use your typical radiator hose pliers squeeze the locks right there and slide it back as well Either one of these will work fine, depending on what you have in your toolbox. Just get up in there, squeeze your two fingers on that clamp, and then start working the hose off. And there we go. Now we gotta get it disconnected from where it goes on that bracket. So if you follow that low pressure hose back, you'll see that there's a plastic mount right here. That plastic mount snaps onto that metal plate that's sandwiched between the brake master cylinder and the hydro booster. Now all we got to do is just squeeze on the fingers, spread them apart, and slide the hose off. And there we go. Now we can actually go on the inside and start worrying about those four nuts holding the hydro booster to the firewall. Now the hydro booster has a rod that actually mounts to the brake pedal. It's held in place with a metal right here. Now that clip's got to come off first before we can worry about taking the actual push rod off. So we'll move on to that next. Now what we're going to do is insert a Phillips screwdriver in between the finger. And we'll bend it up slightly while pushing up. Once we've got it released, we'll make sure we grab it. That way we don't lose it. And there you have it. We've got the clip off. Now we can grab that rod and take it off the brake pedal. Now that we've disconnected the hydro booster rod from the brake pedal, we can now move on to taking the four 15 millimeter bolts off. And that'd be our next step. Just reach up in here and grab the assembly. 
start pulling it out. Now watch your hose. That low pressure hose kind of in the way right there. Just kind of work it up. And there we go. Now I found that it's a lot easier to get these metal lines off the hydro booster after you take the hydro booster assembly out. Like I said, we had to disconnect the hoses that went here and here, and that was your low pressure there. But these two metal pipes right here are a lot easier to manipulate, unfasten, and, and get them out of the way with the hydro booster out of the vehicle. Now those two metal high pressure lines that go into the hydro booster, the fittings on there are 18 millimeter. I've already broke them loose, so you don't have to sit here and watch me struggle. What we're going to do is we're going to leave the lines attached to that metal bracket that's sandwiched between the master cylinder and the hydro booster. Once we take the lines loose, we'll leave it all attached and just slide it off as one. There we go. And there we go. That's that metal plate that I mentioned that's sandwiched. And that's where that low pressure hose actually clipped on that we took off earlier and there's your two studs that went with the master cylinder. Before we install the lines on the new hydro booster one of the main things you want to take a moment to look at are the o-rings on the end. Make sure that they're still intact that there's no issues. If you think they're questionable go ahead and replace them first. Then it's just a matter of sliding the bracket over the studs and working on getting the lines positioned correctly. And there you go. Start snugging down the lines once we got them seated. At this point, the new replacement hydro booster is ready to be taken back to the truck to be installed. But I want to point out a couple things. I'm going to do some torque specs. The two studs right here that the master cylinder slides over, the two nuts that hold that in place, the torque for that is going to be 160 inch pounds. 160 inch pounds on the two nuts for the brake master cylinder. Now, four nuts on the back for the studs that protrude through the firewall. Torque specs on each one of those four nuts is going to be 21 foot pounds. 21 foot pounds on the four nuts holding the hydro booster to the firewall. Now, the steps for reinstalling the hydro booster are the exact same as removal, just in opposite order. Just go ahead and maneuver it back through the firewall. Put your nuts on the back side. I gave you the torque specs for those. Then you can start working on your lines, your master cylinder, and items like that. Just take your time and you shouldn't have any problems. So what you see right here in front of you is the actual step-by-step -step procedure that Chrysler recommends. They show a handheld vacuum pump, uh, which usually comes in the kit with some lines and also a bottle. And also there's a special tool, which is a rubber plug type fitting that goes inside that power steering reservoir bottle. Now what you're going to do is you're going to fill the level all the way up to max on the reservoir of the vehicle. Now keep in mind, engine's off. We're not cranking it at this time and it's not running. Now we're going to go ahead and create a vacuum using that handheld pump right there. And as we do, we're going to start removing air out of the power steering system. What we're going to do from time to time is we're going to release vacuum pull the tool off and we're going to check the bottle level and if we need to add we'll keep adding. We'll repeat this procedure till we finally notice that there's not a big drop in fluid anymore. At that point we can actually crank the vehicle up and we can go from lock to lock which is all the way to the right all the way to the left. Now what you want to do is don't hold it maxed all the way out to the side. Once you get to the end stop back it off and return to the other direction. Now you'll stop the engine, you'll go ahead and check the fluid level again, and you'll repeat that a few more times just so that finally you get to that happy point where the fluid level is not changing. So what I'll go ahead and do now and show you that actual tool setup as it is in this image. Now this is the exact same setup that I use and that you see on that piece of paper just a moment ago. You got the handheld vacuum pump, you got your lines, you got your bottle with your fluid. Like I mentioned, you want it about halfway or more. That way when you release the trigger and the vacuum drops that you don't get air going back into the system. And of course on the end, there's that little special tool. That right there is a rubber plug with nothing more than a hole in the end. And it's kind of cone shaped so it can fit in different style power steering bottles. And once you create a vacuum, it forms a tight fit anyway. And like I said, that's what I use. It saves me a lot of time. And uh, I don't have to sit there and wait and wait and wait for all the air to get out of the fluid. This way uh, I can get it done a lot faster. 
Now those of you interested in buying that special tool, that little rubber cone shaped piece that goes inside the reservoir bottle on the power steering system, now that part number is going to be 9688A as an alpha, 9688A as an alpha. And also that's about $22 uh, plus tax is what I've seen online so far. Now, if you don't have access to a handheld vacuum pump or a special fitting, have no fear, you can still bleed the system. It's just going to take a little bit longer than normal. Now, what I recommend doing is basically like they had you do in some of their initial steps, we're going to fill that reservoir all the way up to full. And what we'll do then is we'll actually start the vehicle. We'll turn the steering wheel all the way to the left and we'll turn it all the way to the right. And we might go back and forth a few more times. Now, like I said, never hold it at the max stop. You can damage the pump. But once you get there, cut the vehicle off, go out there, look at the bottle, and see if, if the fluid level has dropped. If it has, add some fluid. Now, when you do this method, what I highly recommend doing is when you cut the vehicle off, let it sit there for about five to 10 minutes because the fluid is going to be aerated. And what we need to do is let the air get out of the fluid. So as you see, it's going to be a kind of a pink color, having a lot of bubbles. If you let it sit for a while, it'll start turning back to the normal color and the air will come out. Now then you will, will repeat the same procedure over and over till you finally get to the point where, once again, the fluid level is not changing. And then you should be good. You shouldn't have any more noise related to the power steering. And like I said, the fluid level should be correct. So hopefully after watching this video, you got a little more confidence or knowledge on how to replace the hydro booster if you ever need to. And also what to look for as far as where leaks could be at. This should be the exact same procedure on all years as far as Cummins Dodge diesel trucks. The only slight difference might be the size of the nuts holding the assembly to the firewall. Maybe the high pressure lines going in might have a different size fitting. Nonetheless, the procedure should be exactly the same. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget you can like me on Facebook and you can check me out on Instagram and Twitter as well. And if you got any comments or suggestions about the video you just watched today on the Hydro Booster or anything Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, or Ram related, you can always email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com and I'll try to get back to you in a timely manner. Once again, everybody, thanks for the comments, suggestions, the sharing, and also for watching the video.